Hey, I feel like I see some of your fur finally starting to grow back. And yeah, good to see you haven't lost your energy. She's the ringleader. She's the bad influence that encourages everybody to bust out through the fence in the opening. Huh, Coco? You twerp. What's up guys? How's it going? This is a homemade homestead and I'm Jesse and you know Rachel of course. <laughs> <laughs> well what are we doing, honey? Our corn is in full swing and so we need to get some put up. It's just coming on too fast to eat it all fresh. So we want to fill up our freezer with it. Yeah. And we're losing daylight, so. Yeah, let's get picking. All right. So how do I know when it's ready, when I should pull it? Well, um, it depends on the maturity that you want the ear, but generally speaking, once the silk starts to turn, that kind of uh, golden, golden color, that's about the color you want it when it's uh, mature down inside. And I'm sure, I imagine the darker the silk gets, that's an indication that the, if you like the corn to be a little bit I older, it gets a little bit tougher, the kernels, but the kernels are bigger. Mm. So see, you, you take a look at that silk right here. See, well, all garden. You see, that's starting to turn, so I just go ahead and pick it. Well, and am I wanting to try to find bigger ears than smaller? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might look for a smaller ear here and there for the kids. It might make it easier for them to eat. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a beautiful um, harvest them. They are pretty close together. Yeah, I can see. Um, They're hard to pick almost because you, you kind of can't see where they are. You know. I don't they know. made good use of the space though, and they did and didn't hurt their growing yeah. any. Yeah, it seems like they did okay. So we ran out of daylight, or we're running out of daylight, yes, and we've we also are. ran out of bucket space. We got four of these kitty litter buckets full of corn. So now we're gonna shuck them. My favorite place to do that is outside. Keep Jessica, that mess outside. Yeah. They can be filled with earwigs <laughs> and also that silk yeah. just kinda goes everywhere. One of these. So yeah. that's our favorite place, right? One to do yeah. it outside. Best place ever. And Jesse just brought over a gorilla cart. We're gonna throw all the corn husks in here and we'll put all the corn cobs in either a bucket or a bag and take those inside and wash those up. I never gave you guys a chance to see. You notice that sort of brown, golden color. It's not really dark, dark brown. Yeah, this, is, this is about the color I think we've we figured out we like it. Daddy, I like this color. You do too? Uh-huh. Our two-year-old likes it too, I guess. Sure enough, you see that? Nice golden kernels, but not overly old. They're not starting to wrinkle yet. That's a sign that, they are got, that they've gotten too old and the juice is starting to uh, dry out of them. that silk off and if there's anything yucky on there, cut off any bad spots. See like this one has a yucky spot. It looks like a worm got in there to eat a bunch. So I just cut below that and we'll give that to the chicken and the rest of the ear looks just fine. A 
right, now that the corn is washed, I have some pots over here on the stove. This first pot is a double boiler. So it has a pot in the bottom and I just have enough water till it's hitting these holes. You just don't want the water to come up through. We like to steam our corn. We feel like it gives it the best flavor. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. So if you don't have a double boiler, there's a really inexpensive um, solution. They have these steamer baskets and it fits whatever pot you wanna use. So it just opens up. If you have a smaller pot, it'll sit smaller. So I have a secondary pot over here that I use this in. So it just sits right down in there and I did the same thing with the water. You can see it's just right below these holes. I don't want the water to completely go away while I'm steaming because it can actually burn the bottom of your pot. So you do wanna have a good amount of water but just not enough to boil your corn in. Because we have so much corn to do, I'm gonna do two pots and we're just gonna run through them in batches. Did you guys plant any corn this year? What varieties do you like to plant if you do? This is um, peaches and cream corn. It's our favorite, it's really nice and sweet. And we find that this way, it just freezes and cooks up so well. This isn't the exact lid that went with this pot. One day I was putting dishes away and I actually hit its lid on the counter and it shattered. I had no idea that these glass lids like shattered to pieces all over the floor. So I'm borrowing this lid from a different pot and it does kind of fit on it. So I think that'll work, but I was just shocked. I couldn't believe that they shatter like that. I'm gonna turn both of these pots on and set them on high until I can see them really start to steam and then I'm gonna turn them down. I don't wanna overcook them because they can go chewy. So that looks about right to me. That was about five minutes steaming them. You can go longer if you want to, but oh, there's something I missed. Um, but this works. Now I'm just gonna let them cool a little bit to the touch so I can cut them off the cob. All right, so I'm gonna take my ear of corn that has been cooked, and I like to go not super far back because when you go really far back, it kinda makes it less creamy because you're getting like some of the cob. So I just kinda go down, and then once I go all over, then I take the back of my knife and I just kind of scrape down to get anything left in these little holes. We've tried freezing the corn on the cob just like this and then warming it back up and it just feels like it overcooks. We found that this way it stays nice and tender not overly chewy and it lasts a long time i mean use your judgment whatever you think but i've had corn last well over a year in my freezer and it's partially because of how we bag it up see it's pretty clean down in all these holes I will throw this out to our chickens though, in case I miss any little bits, they'll find them. Now I like to take a little sandwich baggie and put my corn right in this bag first. I found you can fit about five ears of corn cut off the cob into each one of these bags which works for one dinner for us, or I could always saw out two bags if, if we need to, if this is gonna be a main part of dinner. So I got one of these Ziploc baggies filled up, and I like to take my sandwich bag and put it inside a gallon size Ziploc bag, and this way it keeps that freezer burn off of your corn, and it lasts a really long time. So I'm just gonna fill this up with a bunch of these, get it labeled, and put it in my freezer. Okay, so this last clip that you saw was from last night. Now my corn is completely frozen solid, and I wanna show you guys how to warm it back up when you're ready to use it. So on my stove, I have a nice cast iron pan, 
And I like to throw in some butter. And our corn, remember, is already cooked, so I'm just trying to warm it up. And I like to do that low and slow. If you run the bag under some cold water, it'll pop out of your bag pretty easily. I'm just gonna cover this and let it go on low. And that's how easy it is to thaw it out. Now I could throw this into any recipe that I'd like, or I could even serve it as a side to dinner. I just love to put butter with it, salt and pepper, and it's great with any dinner. Well, thanks for joining us for that video of our corn harvest. It was a great year this year. Let us know how your guys' corn crop was, if you, grew, if you grew corn or what variety you happen to enjoy. We really enjoyed this variety. If you, this was the variety that you went with, let us know what your thoughts were about it. That about wraps it up for our corn video. We are uh, so glad you guys joined us for that. And uh, we encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.